Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, and we are in Murphy, North Carolina. This is day 56 of the Harris U.S. tour. We'll have visited 22 states as we um, end our tour, which will be ending our tour on Sunday of this week. Yes, on day 59. Yeah, on day 59. And uh, we, I have to say, it's been an amazing honor. We have a few days left, but it's been an amazing, amazing honor to tour our country and to see all the different real estate markets firsthand, to meet so many of you who went out of your way to meet with us and give us suggestions on Instagram. And our, if you guys want to see our Instagram uh, travel journal, just go to uh, at Tim and Julie, I'm sorry, pound sign Tim and Julie Harris on Instagram, and you can visit us there. But the um, experience we've had meeting firsthand, of course, we feel like we know some of you because we've seen you on our webinars on Facebook Live, and some of you guys are involved in our EXP group. Some of you are coaching clients, podcast listeners. We've been connected with you digitally sometimes for decades, right? But to meet all of you and meet a lot of you in person has been an incredibly rewarding experience. You know, there's thousands and thousands of you who've been in coaching clients, and um, you know, this podcast has had between 15 and 20 million downloads. It's the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate agents in the nation. And it is a, an extreme honor uh, that you've chosen us and continue to choose us to be part of your lives. And um, I have to say, after this trip, it's even more meaningful to me. I would agree with that 100%. Yeah. It is amazing, isn't it? It is. It, you know, we do chat with you guys and email and talk with you, of course. But there is something to be said for seeing you in person, of course, especially when we meet with you in your own home market. And we see, because there is quite a bit of uh, diversity to markets. There's all sorts of different, not just construction styles, but different types of real estate. Some of you guys are commercial, whatever. It's great to meet with you in person. And so that's been a pleasure. And last night we had a special treat seeing the actual Milky Way from our front porch and yeah, our back did. porch. We it have, was amazing. We wrote down, Julie and I wrote down a list of goals that we wanted to accomplish on this trip. Not goals, but hope things we'd hope we'd experience. And uh, we did not end up going to Montana because we had a lot of friends up in Montana that were warning us away from going to Montana because on our journey, it was basically on fire. So that was, that was, that was a no-go. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a quick stop in Gardner, but we but, didn't get all the way into it. But Montana was going to be basically where we were going to see the stars and we didn't end up doing it. So it's really nice to be able to see the stars here in North Carolina. And Julia, to the point you were making a second ago, it does, uh, I hope everyone understands the difference between communicating with somebody digitally versus communicating with someone mm -hmm. in person. And that really goes back to the founding principles of our uh, coaching business and really our real estate practice is being a proactive lead generator and buying, being a proactive lead generator. That means having real conversations, using your real voice mm -hmm. ideal. I mean, obviously over the phone in person doing the real work of real estate. And it has, it's, it's fascinating to me as we've been on this sojourn. And in some cases, We've had conversations with people about their real estate businesses, and it is interesting to me the ones that are, um, I have to say, now I have confirmation bias to what I'm saying now, but just for what it's worth, the ones that are proactive lead generators are definitely more consistently successful uh, and definitely seem to be more calm. And the mm -hmm. ones that were buying their business are the ones that were essentially hoping that their digital fishing exploration, just casting a whole bunch of ads or just doing a whole bunch of passive stuff would hopefully mm -hmm. one day, someday create business for them. Those people definitely were living a little bit on the edge, it felt to me. Well, it's the definition of being out of control of your own business. Exactly. I think that's the underlying stress that they may not always recognize that versus the people who do know how, how to proactively lead generate on their own without buying the business. Well, but this is, I know we're going to finish up our points on being an introvert, but this does yep. go to a grander point, which I think is kind of fascinating too. The, um, an inexperienced, I think, um, I'll just use the word inexperienced business person. If they see their leads flow slowing down, their go-to is going to be to say, spend more money and buy more business. Yes. Right. That's what they're going to do. They're going to say, how can we buy more business? Now, if they're a little bit more sophisticated and they're already doing some sort of ad spend or marketing spend, they might say, well, how can we maximize what we're doing? But for the most part, what they're going to do is they're going to reach for their wallets. They're going to throw some more sure. money at it just to basically, um, you know, increase their leads flow. And they're going to feel omnipresent, you know, fear and loathing of always having to do more, more, and more. And they're going to use the word try a lot. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to try it out. We'll see and, how it and, goes. And they're not, they're not going to uh, really do any uh, work whatsoever 
on sifting and sorting who they're listening to because what they what they're being uh, conned into believing is that you spend more and more money you generate you build your brand you generate more and more leads and that generates more and more uh, revenue now I want to predicate what I'm saying is that fundamentally is true. You can spend yourself into oblivion, have absolutely no net profit, spend yourself into debt, and you can generate more revenue, but it won't produce any profit. And what's the point of being in business if you're not producing profit? And that little mental, um, you know, that conversation is something all of you guys need to be having. Because if your go-to when you're not feeling leads flow is to spend more money, or how can I buy more leads, or how can I pay more, uh, buy more referral fees, isn't there a omnipresent, constant, a sense of dread and basically in your very core, because that's how you're doing business because your subconscious mind is saying, yes, you might generate more transactions, but at the end of the day, you're not generating more profit. You didn't get into this business guys, just to move hand money from one hand to the other. You got in this business so that you would hopefully have enough profit that then with that profit, you could reinvest it and that profit then would make you rich. And by our definition in which I'm more than willing, you guys can take this because it really does, I think, remove the veil of what the word rich means. It's simply where your money works for you and you no longer work for your money. Your objective, and I'll give you this as a suggested goal. When you get into real estate, look, the, the, the recognition and the awards and the plaques and all those things, they may or may not come. What will come is the day when you wish you would have been building a business that was based on profit. And what will come is the day when you wish you would have actually created enough passive income to more than cover all your personal overhead so that you didn't have to have that constant feeling of stress. And that's what we coach you to do in our business. That is really the essence of what we want you to embrace is the what. And, and so real estate can be an amazing gift because it will be the vehicle to create that for you. Or can it can be an amazing curse that's going to be like an anchor that's going to always hold you back. Because if you're only buying business and you don't really have a clear objective of what your goal is other than to sell more, if you don't have a clear objective to be financially free, then you're always going to have this sense of lack of accomplishment. The sense of accomplishment that if you just allow yourself to consciously, mentally embrace the idea that you can wake up one day and you can have money coming in passively and that passive income more than covers all your personal overhead. In other words, your real estate transactions go to fund money, go to maybe uh, paying off some debt, go to paying for colleges, go to donating it to your church, go to taking that trip to Europe that you promised you'd always do because all your core expenses all your insurances and your food and your whatever, whatever, they're all covered by passive income. But how about that be your goal? Why don't you embrace that as your goal? What happens if you embrace that as your goal? Because here's, here's what happens when you embrace that as your goal. There's two thoughts that are going to happen. You all hopefully are resonating with what I'm saying. It's a very seductive goal because it means freedom for you financially. So once you say, okay, that's my goal, Tim, I know I have to earn say $10,000 a month passively. And at that point, I'm financially free. That money comes in every single month. I don't have to necessarily worry about money in the same way anymore. Now my worrying about money is whether or not I'm going to buy a, you know, a 50-foot boat or a 35-foot boat, whatever, those types of thoughts, right? What happens then? Then you're going to have to start applying the filter of are you a proactive lead generator or a passive lead generator? And that's what the next thought's going to be. Because when you start seeing, let's say you're successful and you're selling two to three to 10 houses per month, but you realize you have no net profit, your net, you, the money that you're making goes to paying your own personal overhead and taxes and you have no money left over. So you're not actually increasing your net worth. You're just flowing cash. You're cash flowing a business, which is fine if that's what your objective is. But I'm guessing after a little bit in this business, you're realizing that wasn't what your objective was. Your objective, what your heart and your soul wants is to be free. So once you embrace that concept of being free, then you're going to start taking a really hard look at where you're spending your money. You know, you're going to take a hard look where you're spending your money on the personal side, but I'll suggest to you, you're wasting far more money on your business side than you are on your personal side. Don't go and, you know, beat yourself up about your Starbucks spend. Look at what you're spending on leads. Look what you're spending on your CRM. Look what you're spending on branding. That's where you're wasting your money. And so the number one suggestion I'll have for all of you is you go through all of your actual expenses and then you ask yourself, is this thing going to make me money in the next 60 to 90 days? And if it's not, stop doing it. It's a waste of money nine times out of 10. If it's not going to put money in your pocket urgently, just completely stop doing it. And I mentioned this last week, and this was a fun experience when Julie and I were in, um, where are we, Iowa? We were sitting in a, a room. There was, I don't know, less than 30 people in there. Mm -hmm. It was an impromptu, Tim and Julie are coming to 
what town were we in? I don't even remember. Um, Des Moines. Des Moines, yeah. Yeah. And some uh, Heath Moulton put a very nice gathering for us together. A really nice, you know, soul of the earth types. Just great people. Mm-hmm. So there was this table that was over. It was over on my right side in the back of the room. And it was a round table. And uh, it was a group of, you know, different ages and all the rest of it. And so I asked them. I set the challenge. I said, if you had to take five listings in the next 30 days uh, and you got a check for, I don't know, remember how I did it. I think I said you got a, a $100,000 you know, it's like a contest, right? Mm-hmm. And you got a hundred thousand uh, dollar bonus bonus reward. for get, for listing five houses in the next thirty days, and and then they thought I was going to say, "What would you do to accomplish that goal?" I didn't. What I said was, "What will you stop doing to accomplish that goal?" Because when you hit yourself with that question, that actually cuts through the BS a lot faster. And what they st- would stop doing, and they didn't want to answer the question. There was probably six mm-hmm. or eight of them sitting at the table, and all of them just looked at me like deer in the headlights. It started with silence. It started with silence. <laughs> And then yeah. continue the silence. And I wouldn't let it go. You guys know me if you listen to this podcast. I'm dogged when I'm trying to help somebody. And so then I say to them, I say, well, you know, let's go. Let's do this. We're not going to back off this. And they realize that. And then someone had the courage to Adam, I think his name was, had the courage to say what he would stop doing. And it was so hilarious. As soon as the first person said, I would stop working on my branding. I would stop doing, you know, worrying about my digital influence. I would stop. It's like they already knew what they were doing to waste their time. And so they made this little, it was not very many things, four or five things. And then I said, okay, so knowing that you can, that you're wasting your time doing those things. Now, what would you do if you had to take five listings in the next 30 days? And they all knew, you know, they all knew instantly. I didn't even have to freaking press them for it. They all instantly said what they would do. And then I asked them, well, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, honestly, if you know what you shouldn't be doing, if you know what you should be doing to accomplish the goal of having five listings in the next 30 days, why wouldn't you just do those things? Why would you waste your time doing the other things? And then one person said, fear. One person said, I don't know how to do it. You guys get the point? Mm-hmm. So until you bridge that uh, knowledge gap, until you work past your, uh, res- what's the word, resistance to doing the real work of real estate, you're always going to be best case scenario, hand to mouth. Good month, bad month, closings go to pay for past bills. You're then buying more leads. You're never actually independent. You're never actually free. And I, again, I really, I'm hoping and I'm praying and I truthfully mean it because it's the core message of what we want to bring to you guys in our coaching business. The whole reason you get into business is not just to buy yourself a job, which is what a lot of you do. And many of you, I get it. That's for just having enough income to replace your job income is that was a big breakthrough. But now you're past that emotionally. You actually want to get to the point where you're actually rich, where your money works for you. You no longer work for your money. You're going to have to start doing the real work of real estate, starting with being a proactive lead generator, which means you're going to have to learn how to have real conversations with real people following essentially a scripted approach, which is essentially a conversation outline. You do that consistently. And I have to tell you what it's not. It's not exciting. It's not sexy. It's often not fun. It's not um, exhilarating. It's not oftentimes not stressful. Um, It's just work. That's what it is. It's just work. And you live your life like that every single morning and you're going to start getting consistent results. You're going to start taking consistent numbers of listings that the first time all of you take, not from a center of influence and past clients, but the first time a real breakthrough you can have in your business. Actually, you know what? That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Could you write that down? We need to write down the 10 biggest breakthroughs that they can have in their real estate businesses uh, so that it's like a a breakthrough emotionally. Like the first time, here's what I was about to say, Jules. The first time you take a listing that was a competitive listing where you had no familial or personal contact. Yeah, well, it is absolutely a breakthrough. We hear it in coaching all the time. It's one of the most exciting things that we hear. And it's so interesting because the coaching client will say, you're not going to believe this. Here's what happened. We'll be like, all right, tell me. And what's great is we share that on Facebook Live amongst their colleagues so they can learn from each other. And they'll say something like, you know, I was really out of my comfort zone and I followed the system. I followed up faster than I normally would. I used a script that I normally wouldn't have. I asked the questions that made me nervous in the pre-qualification script. I sent the pre-listing package for the first time. And you know what? My listing appointment wasn't two and a half hours walking away with no signature. I actually did it and I was competing. And now, now how do I get more? Yeah, it lasted it's, 20 minutes. Yeah, But, but folks awesome. don't understand. And I think it's because they don't have the business background, truthfully. They don't understand that if you fall, like, I'm not, uh, our coaching system is obviously not a franchise, but why do people buy franchises? Why do franchises have like a thousand percent uh, chance of succeeding where people starting their own businesses where they're trying to figure it out all themselves have like a thousand percent chance of failing? Why is it that a franchise works and a normal business doesn't? Again, we're not selling franchises. Please be clear. 
It's because you're walking into a scaled system that's proven to work in all price ranges, in all market conditions. You're walking into, like, imagine somebody says, you know what, Julie? I have a great idea. I'm mm-hmm. going to start us a hamburger joint, mm-hmm. right? Now, I know we could buy a McDonald's or we could buy a, you know, that's funny. We drove past, what was it, a sign on the road? It uh, was, I forget what uh, oh, part of yeah, the Midwest that, it was. It was basically saying, it was a, buy a, your franchise. It was a shake and, uh, what was shake it? Shake Shack. Was it no, Shake no, Shack? No, no, that's shake. Southern California. <laughs> We've been too many places. Um, it's blending. It doesn't matter. It was, it was a burger joint franchise, and mm-hmm. they were advertising on billboards. Yes. And here's what I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. The big uh, takeaway was they essentially were marketing the fact that you would have a net income of $136,000 a year on average yeah. from o- owning a shake and steak or something. Yeah, with as little as X invested up front. Yeah, and I thought to myself, this, that I wish every agent could see that. It was a quarter million. Mm-hmm. So you invest a quarter million, most of which those franchisees are going to borrow that money. After a certain amount of time in years, which is probably quite a bit, they're going to hopefully make $136,000 yeah. a year before taxes. Mm-hmm. I before to, taxes. Uh, before taxes. And I thought to myself, even in like where we are, right? Well, in the United States, average sale price is 359000 now, mm-hmm. whatever it is. How many houses does the average agent have to sell to make? Uh, now, if they do yeah. it our way, mm-hmm. right? And they're sure. making an average of $10,000 per well, sale. And they're they keeping to, much of that profit. They have to sell maybe 15 houses with broker fees. Right. And they're basically going to essentially make us the same amount as some guy that took the risk. Some guy and gal took the risk sure. and have the trailing liability of having a fast food restaurant, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and they can have the same amount of net income. A- if and they do it's it- scalable at a different level, too. Oh, of course. You know, well, and we're only using the national average. Well, think about that, what you just said. So mm-hmm. if you, you decide, okay, I'm going to throw down the quarter million. And again, a lot of people borrow that money from the SBA or whatever. Quarter million, I believe, is the maximum amount the SBA will loan you to start a franchise. So you borrow your quarter million dollars. You now have this trailing liability that you're personally liable for. If it's mm-hmm. shake and steak or whatever doesn't work out, you're still owning that quarter million dollars. And then after, let's say, probably five or six years, if you personally were working it like a real job intensely, you might start making around $10,000 a month. I'm going to assume that's the way it works. I could be wrong. If any of you are familiar with that franchise, let me know. But my point is, is that look how long it takes for you to maybe possibly someday make a hundred plus thousand dollars owning a fast food restaurant. Now, if you wanted to make more money, if your steak, you got your steak and shake, steak and then shaken, and mm-hmm. you decide you now want to double your income, you want to now make say quarter million dollars, you got to open a new one. You're gonna have to borrow the money again. You're gonna have to, you know, basically scale it up, take a certain number of years, take a whole bunch of risk, have a whole bunch of employee problems. Somebody, you know, complained because their hamburger was too. Maybe you chose Hot. the wrong location. Exactly. Maybe the lot next to you went right. sour. You know, you you do have a lot of liability. Exactly. But it, the thing is, is those businesses don't fail because people are following specific models, systems. systems. You get into real estate. And what a lot of you guys do, you say, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit from here. I'm going to take a little bit from there. I'm going to do a little social networking. I'm I don't need t- any stinking systems. I, I can just download a few things for free online and... Right. You know, lace it together and figure it out. I'm not going to use scripts. Scripts don't feel natural to me. Sorry if there's an echo, guys. We're still in our cabin. Uh, there's uh, Scripts don't feel natural to me. I'm going to instead say things that are going to be more, you know, whatever feels natural to me. I thought blah, 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 right? You're gonna, like, so you're going to start your steak and shake, and all of a sudden someone walks into your restaurant, and they're going to be the people that take the order, and you're going to tell them what to say and how to say it. They're going to go, you know what? That just doesn't feel natural to me. I'm going to say what I want to say. I know, you guys call, I know you call it a hamburger, but I want to call it a burger ham, right? I mean, that's what real estate agents do. They make it so much harder on themselves than just plugging into a proven system. Why would you do that if your goal is to basically have financial freedom? Why would you do that if your goal is to make money helping people? It does not make sense, does it? And yet that's what you do. Why? Why is it you're trying to basically uh, feel your way through the dark and how to start your own successful business? Why would you just emulate, copy? Why wouldn't you just do what other people have done? Thousands and thousands and thousands of coaching clients have proven that our system works. See, guys, don't you get it? Now, here's what I know. Some of you won't do it because you're not that serious about your businesses. And you know if you plug into our system, you plug into our coaching company, you know it's going to basically cause you, force you, in essence, hold you accountable to being actually successful. You're going to be essentially coached on what to say and how to say it. There's going to be no more winging it. And what does that eliminate? If we say, if you say this, you do this, you do the other thing, and you deliver the pre-listing pack, you pre-qualify and you present, the only reason that you wouldn't get that listing at that point was because you didn't follow the instructions and, and what you're then going to have to be uh, culpable for or responsible for 
is your own personal failure because you didn't follow the instructions. Now, if you never actually follow a proven system, if you are trying to wing it and put your own system together, you then can say, well, you know what? I just need to tweak my system. You see what you're doing? Or you can blame, you know, any number of different things or people and make it their fault, not your fault. You're doing that so that you don't have to actually feel the feelings of essentially failure. And I, th that's a huge mistake. So if you follow our system and you do it exactly textbook and you don't get the listing, it's easy for your coach that works for us to go in there and help you self-diagnose through basically a series of questions because where you screwed up. it can up. only be a number of maybe five or six exactly. things because it is a system, right? And when you follow that system, I mean, there is, it's easy to identify where you got off track. It is. Sometimes it's like eight questions. Yeah. A coach, we train our coach, we train our coaches to ask mm -hmm. basically a series of eight questions. Eight based to 10 on the questions. system. Based on the system. Did you do this? Did you do this? What do they say? And then you'll say, yes, this is what typical agents will say. Yes, I asked that question. Okay, then what was their answer? Well, I don't remember. It's in my notes. Oh, this is what a coach is going to say. Go get your notes so we can see what they said. Oh, it turns out you didn't ask the question. That's the reason you didn't get the listing because you didn't know you were competing with other agents. You didn't know what that they owed on a third mortgage. You didn't know that they actually didn't have to sell, you know, in the next 30 days that they wanted to sell next year in, you know, whatever. You didn't ask all the questions. And so you walked in unprepared. That's the reason you lost the listing. But see, some of you aren't ready emotionally to accept the responsibility that your success or your failure is predicated 100% on your own actions and you cannot blame anything external. There will always be market forces. There will always be competition. There will always be gyrations in the marketplace. But at the end of the day, when you follow a proven system, go back to my steak and shake idea. If a steak and shake franchise, now I'm going to assume they do a really great job of making sure you don't uh, pick out a crappy location on some off street. They're always... Well, they um, studied it. They're following a system, right? They you know, they know it, what works. It wasn't Steak and Shake, Julie. It was I that, think you're right. It was that one where you drive up and it's like a 50s drive-in where they you, they'll come out to you and they take the order. But they don't have those in Puerto Rico, obviously. I know. It'll hit me in a second. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't matter. But the point is that they've studied what the good locations are, what the size of the restaurant needs to be, what your drive through should be, what you should be next to. They're following a system. And so what some of you will do is you'll, you'll say, okay, you're going to get your loan from the SBA. It's going to be a collateralized personal obligation loan. You're going to get your 20, 250 grand. You're going to go buy your steak and shake. And then you're going to have to basically build out the restaurant. You're going to have to build out the real estate. And then you're going to have the obligation of paying the franchise or every single month, whether whatever your fees are, whatever your revenue was, you could be losing money every month and you still got to pay them whatever they charge eight or 10% every single month. Right. You are paying, you have, the, then you have employees, you have all these expenses uh, but what happens if, for example, then your business starts to fail, you know, your business starts to fail and then you're going to say, well, this franchise is terrible. Well, no, it's because you weren't following the system. It's because you weren't actually, you didn't build it in the right location. You didn't actually, uh, you made it so the, when people pull into your restaurant that they sit in their cars for an hour before you go out and help them, you weren't actually making the food the way we wanted you to make it. You guys see, that's what the point of being in business it being in business for yourself is not supposed to be a creative outlet. It's not supposed to be arts and crafts. Being in business for yourself is supposed to be about providing superior service to other people in such abundance uh, that you're, you become financially successful. That's really the purest definition of what you're supposed to be doing as a practitioner. Why do you make it so hard on yourself? Why is it that there's so many businesses that are able to survive in the real estate business selling stuff to real estate agents? And we're in that industry too. But why is there, why is there supposedly over a billion dollars in revenue that someone said as much as $3 billion a year in revenue that's earned from all the companies that are selling agents things, mostly leads. Why is it that all those businesses are able to even have any income? It's because agents think that their job as an entrepreneur, which is what you in essence are, is to create your own system. And so you might as well basically buy leads and do all these other things. Why is it that people don't get into this business and say, you know what? I do not want to screw around. I do not want to be one of the you know, essentially this was the statistic. 98% of all agents fail within two and a half years or something. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be real estate roadkill. I want to actually no. succeed and I want to have ever increasing levels of success. Why is it that this agent, this industry seems to attract so many people that are so drawn to the novel opposed to the proven? I'll never understand that truthfully. Well, I think they want it to be easier. Everybody wants to believe in the easy button. But, the, but Julie, my you point know. is, is following a system is the easy button. I know, but it, it's not as obvious to them when they can just say, yeah, let's try this out. Here's my credit card number versus, okay, here's the system that you've got to follow. You do this and that happens. And when you do this, that happens. And when you say this, this is the result that you get. I think that there's a blessing in following a simple system where you do see failure right in the beginning. 
and where you can have a coach say, you know what? All you've got to do is change this step well, go and back. you win. Take a half step to what you just said, because yeah. that's really an important thing. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of decisions that people make in life in general, but let's just keep it to what we are experts at, which, mm-hmm. and we are, which is mm-hmm. real estate agent success. Um, a lot of agents are building their businesses around never feeling anything that even remotely resembles failure. And the thing is, is that's what they've nerfed up their lives. They've nerfed nerfed up their expectations for what they're going to experience in life. Mm -hmm. And the truth is you learn so much more because, okay, so if that's your, if that's your subconscious approach to life, what are you not doing? What actions are you not taking? All the actions you should be taking to be successful is the answer, right? You're never going to put yourself in a competitive listing situation, which means you don't, you're never going to have a listing, uh, a listing presentation. You're never going to have a pre-listing pack. You're never going to learn an organized script or an approach to basically communicating with people. You're never going to have an organized approach to saving money and building wealth because you are so, uh, uh, the idea of ever experiencing anything that re- remotely resembles rejection is abhorrent to you. Why? Why is that true? Why is it, why is hearing uh, the occasional no, which is what you will hear, from strangers. Why is it so shocking to you? Is it, I bet you many of you listening to me right now, you're saying, you know what? That's not shocking to me. I can handle the occasional no. I mean, it's no big deal. Then why aren't you, why are you building your uh, business around nerfing it up and always protecting yourself from, uh, from ever hearing anyone, uh, you know, ever saying no to you? That's what passive lead generation is. That's what drip uh, marketing is. That's what building your brand is. You're hoping and praying That people, because all your confluence of Mickey Mouse, are going to want to call you and do business with you, and you're just going to have to order take. That's what you really believe. Whether you consciously believe it or you subconsciously believe it, your actions should tell you that you believe it. And and that's going to ultimately kill your potential because the real money is always going to be made in sales. The real money is always going to be made in life when you're a proactive lead generator, when you're willing to be the person that is furiously fast with your lead follow-up, which is, you know, going out there, taking a scripted approach, knowing what to say and how to say it. And by the way, our scripts, we want you to internalize that. We want you to memorize them. We want you to internalize them. And then we want you to personalize them. We do want you to make our scripts and our entire system yours. And after, but if you skip a step and try to go right to personalization, you'll have never done the real work and you'll have never actually memorized it, let alone internalized it. But what happens is after you've memorized it, after you've internalized Personalize it. At, then, when you start to personalize it, you won't even you're you won't listen, even know you're doing it. You won't even know you're doing it. It becomes unconscious. You become unconsciously competent about what you say in the conversations you have. Are you like that in any aspect of your life right now? Is there anything? Are there like five or six conversations with you can just fluidly talk about them with absolute perfection that someone would think that you are the absolute world's expert on that particular topic. That's how you have to be when it comes to proactively lead generating and listing real estate. That's what should be your goal. So I have an announcement. Uh Oh, warning. Okay. Warning. Well, I want to set a goal and mm-hmm. I want to set, we did this a few years ago at the start of a year. Mm-hmm. And I want to do something for all of our podcast listeners, coaching clients, people on our EXP group, everyone. I want to set a goal of making effectively the next four months, mm-hmm. the launching pad for an amazing 2022. Because when I'm, and, and I'm fearful of this happening, and I know it's natural. As soon as the weather starts to change, people are going to start basically, you know, ratcheting it sure. back. They're not going to do the real work of real estate. And again, I know this isn't going to appeal to everybody. Some people are going to say, damn it, Tim, I've worked so hard this year. Listen, I know you've worked really hard this year, but chances are you've had a great year from work you did at the tail end of 2020, the last quarter of 2020. Think back. The closings and the momentum you had carrying into this year was from what you did the previous year. And if you're in new in business and you're hearing this for the first time, the momentum that you carry into next year starts today or effectively starts uh, next week when Julie and I are back in Puerto Rico. Yes. <laughs> but here's mm-hmm. what I'd like to do. Mm-hmm. I need your commitment. You yep. were saying on our little walk around this amazing uh, Murphy, North Carolina this morning that mm-hmm. you wanted to start churning out content again. Yes. Okay. I want to create, and we already have a really 90 day plan, mm-hmm. but I want to create a, a 90 day business plan, real estate treasure map meets survival plan meets 90 day sure. plan, whatever. For these guys, and I want to give it to like them. a fourth quarter plan, kind exactly. Of thing? But okay. it's not really for fourth quarter because September is part of third quarter. Yes, right. But I want to create essentially a four month plan. Sure. And uh, because a lot of them don't really do crap in uh, December anyway. If we're being honest, if yes. We're being honest, right? Mm-hmm. In the last week of November, so I'd like to create a really robust, drilled down, okay. absolutely phenomenal fourth quarter plan. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking you, and I just I'm springing this on you. Can you do it? <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. And then here's what we're gonna do. Starting on uh, probably Tuesday. I don't want to make, Julie's got a lot of stuff to do when we get back to Puerto Rico, but let's say Wednesday, yeah. we're going to start announcing a text number and we're going to start basically marketing 
this, uh, it'll be a simple, probably one or two pager mm -hmm. uh, business plan. And then every single day for the next four months, Julie and I are going to coach you guys to that plan and hold you accountable. And we're going to want you to then give us feedback um, and let us know how you're progressing. We'd love to share your success stories. We'd love to hear your tough questions. We'd love to hear your wins and your losses and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So you want to hear That'll something crazy? Sure. When I started this with you a half hour ago, I had no intention of talking about what I just talked about. <laughs> That's but you okay, know what, you but know they need got, it. You know what got me on this? What? Um, a, um, a text I got hmm. that I got three days ago. And I texted the person back and I was just communicating with them and mm -hmm. I, I'm being too indirect with this person in text because they're not a coaching mm -hmm. client. They're not part of our ESP sure. group about the fact that they're wasting so much money and time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was realizing, I asked myself prior to this uh, podcast, why are you not just being direct with this person is what they expect. Yeah. And the reason I'm not direct with people sometimes truthfully, unless they're coaching clients, isn't because I'm trying to hold back. It's because the, a lot of people take offense when we tell them a lot of the things, because a mm -hmm. lot of these passive lead generator things have all have become like a religion. I know. And they want to believe in it so hard. It's, that's like a religion. It is. It yes. is. And, and the problem is that when you do that and you take too long to realize that the results are so abysmal that you, I mean, you could really waste a lot of time and money. And I think that's one of the reasons why people do wash out of this business. They do. And it's sad. And it you is. know, when you and I, you, so you and I sold, you know, hundreds of houses per year. We did it for 10 years. We sold over a hundred houses our first year in the business. And I think it's actually, um, I, I think it's easier to sell mm -hmm. lots of houses now, but I think it's harder to, uh, make a profit. I, I think you're absolutely right. About it's that. easier to do lots of units. Yeah. It's harder to make a profit Yeah, because you get, there's so many seductive messages coming from people like, you know, Gary Keller said he's doubling down on teams and expansion teams and all the rest of it. Why is it that a broker would want you guys to invest yourselves in teams? We've talked about this on podcasts before versus being the sole practitioner who has very high profit margins. I will answer my own question. I know this is a little bit of a diatribe now, but who cares? Um, or a tirade. What is it? Diatribe or tirade? It's one of the two. We'll see how it goes. Yes. Well, we'll let you know it, at the end. But again, this, <laughs> is a, this, this, this team thing, it bubbles up. It started in the 90s. It comes and it goes. It ebbs and it flows. And the reason it does is because if I am a real estate broker, I am Gary Keller. And I have to add agents, you know, at agent count matters when you're in the big brokerage business, which he is. How do I get to add agents? What, what can I do to add more agents? I can convince a successful Tim and Julie, you know, back in the nineties. And I can say, Tim and Julie, look, you guys sold hundred houses your first year. You sold 140 houses or whatever your second year, but you know what you need to now do? You need to add buyer's agents. You need to add a team. And I would be thinking, well, this guy knows more than I do. I mean, he knows, sure. he know he absolutely has, he has a perspective. I don't know. I'm just some more sounds I'm, better. I'm, I'm just some humble dink right. from Ohio. What the hell do I know? You know, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do, working like I'm supposed to work. But now he's saying, oh, and I also need to do branding. Okay. I guess I need to do that. Hold your brand. And now I need to start doing TikTok videos. All right, Julie, start dancing around. We need to do some TikTok videos. But I don't stop to think what the motivation of that person giving me that advice is. And is their advice and is their motivation in alignment with what's best for me? And the answer is no, because what they want me to do is they want me to build a team, add agents, be responsible for those agents, because by adding agents to my team, I might increase sales volume and the number of units, which is good for the brokerage. I might increase, um, the, again, the revenue that's uh, generated from those sales, volume. but do I necessarily increase the net profit that i that Tim and Julie make? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, my net profit goes down. Well, you have to, you're going to do less business. You're going to have to not, you're not working with the buyers and sellers yourself anymore. Well, I'd rather work with a bunch of sellers and have two assistants and run a profit uh, business as 90, you know, I make 10,000, I keep 9,000. Then I would basically make 10,000 and be lucky if I keep a thousand. And is play whack-a-mole all day. Right. You move your effort from basically working with customers and you move it to then what working with a team, which is always transitory teams comes and come and go, they go. And I'm seeing again, this whole thing bubble up again. It's when brokerages are focused on agent count. That's when they start pestering agents to build teams because then the agents, the well-intentioned agents who follow blindly, there's, you know, pseudo religious leaders into the forest, then will basically start adding agents to their teams and then essentially realize that the act of futility that oftentimes is a, uh, is a real estate team, is the effort of forming a real estate team. And here's the reason why it goes back to the original point of the start of today's podcast, because their North Star was not defined. Their North Star 
was uh, something that was easily manipulated. They got into the business because they wanted to be financially independent. They wanted to be their own boss. Maybe they hadn't formulated the goal of being fr having freedom, financial freedom. They hadn't actually put those thoughts together. True with 99% of you, right? But now you have. And yet your dreams and your ambitions along the way have been co-opted by other people's dreams and ambitions because you were not steadfast enough in what your original intention was. Was your original intention to get a bunch of plaques and awards and have a big, a bit, have a big team, big ego fest of no profit? Is that what it was? Nobody's saying yes right now. And guess what? This is another one listened to daily podcast in at least the United States. It's been downloaded 15 to 20 million times. So why do so many of you guys listen to us? Because we just make sense. This is practical and tactical. Because this is in alignment with what you truly want, which is a sense of freedom. What will it feel like? Imagine six months, 12 months from now, when you have created a consistent listing-based business, where the money's flowing in consistently, where you're able to actually not have the real estate night sweats anymore, where you're able to consistently save money. You're not worrying about whether you're paying your taxes. Or you're not worrying about whether Johnny or Susie are going to you know, get their braces or whatever. The financial day-to-day -day is resolved, and now you're able to get into uh, income duplication mode and you're not doing it through adding staff or adding team members you're doing it through creating passive income for yourself you can do that in money uh, multiple different ways we talk about it in harris rules you know real estate rental properties though frankly our favorite one right now is exp revenue share it's going to be um, exp revenue share is the greatest gift to real estate agents ever um, again if you want to learn more about uh, exp just text the letters exp to 47372, text the letters EXP to 47372. If you're looking for an EXP sponsor that's going to be uh, obviously very active in helping you be successful at EXP, do consider Julie and I. We're formally applying for the job of being your sponsor. Just text me directly at 512 758 0206. 512 758 0206. If you're ready to move forward, which hopefully all of you are, and with our coaching program, the great news is you can join for around $100 a month. The easiest way for you to do that is just go over to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching, uh, click on uh, premier coaching, and then you're off to the races. If you are wanting to just gather a little bit more information, you just go over to timandjulieharris.com uh, as well and, and, and look for information there. And that's the greatest and quickest way for you to become one of our coaching members. If you'd like to request a free coaching call and speak to one of our new member coaches to just explore what options are the best fit for you. Just text the word success to 47372. Text the word success to 47372. So Julie, hopefully, I often wonder when mm -hmm. I talk like I just did, mm -hmm. when you and I have conversations in front of all of them like we just sure. did, I wonder, honestly, was I effective enough in, in conveying to them, uh, was I an effective enough communicator that I was able to help them push past their own personal dogma and mooring lines to uh, that's, that's hindering their forward momentum was I effective enough? What more could I have said? What more could I have done? And it haunts me. I've, honestly, I'll think about me too. This is for, what we do, right? This but I'll is think our about this work. for like a good hour. <laughs> sure. You know, could I have said something differently or more effectively? Yeah. Well, we always have tomorrow's podcast. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but I know do, what you mean. So, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm thinking is, you know, I think about our existing coaching clients because I'm in that world Absolutely. all the time, right? And and they often will say you know, thank you and give us all these kudos and I couldn't have done it without you. And now that I have the system and all I have to do is work the system, I'm yep. just so grateful. And I always say, well, it's only as good as what you do with it. So I hope that the listeners don't waste another second. And that doesn't mean that you're not successful. You probably are successful, but if it's not good enough for you yet and you want more and you want better. And when you go back to that self that you were, when you got your real estate license and you said, what do I want out of this? And ultimately you wanted freedom. And maybe that started with replacing your old job and you've done that, but what comes next? And, and so many of them get off track when they get to that first level, that first rung, all right, I replaced my job. And then they get distracted by the teams and the branding and the this and the that and everything that you know rains upon them in their email. Let's level off. That's where they get originally off track, I think. Let's level off there. So the industry over awards, over recognizes sure. for, for virtually no success. I, yeah. I love it when we hear from... It's like uh, an attendance award. Exactly. Which is always definitely not going to get because you first <laughs> missed no. the first two weeks of school. She's failing attendance. Yes. Right but here's the funny thing is we'll have agents who will... And I know you've had this experience too, mm -hmm. who say, you know, Tim, I knew it was time for me to leave that brokerage when I sold three houses and I was agent of the year. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know when, you know, I, I'm doing okay, but why am I the number one agent in my office? Tim, I earned, I earned like <laughs> my old brokerage. I knew it was time for me to leave brokerages when I earned $3,000 uh, all of last quarter. And I was agent of the month every quarter. <laughs> I know. know. Yeah. I mean, isn't that funny though? 
Well, I mean, I think you have to grow into some business maturity and hopefully we're the catalyst that gets them to go, huh, you know what, maybe I really can have and, and get everything I wanted when I decided to get my real estate license, but I've been a little bit off track. Here's what I want to do. I want to systematize it and I want to learn that. And then I just have to work the system. That's freedom. I mean, I hear from our coaching clients all the time, somebody like uh, Ziggy, right? That's uh, in New York. And Ziggy's great to talk to because it took her several months of, you know, figuring it out and systematizing. And then it literally was like one day the door opened for her and now she systematically takes the listings she goes on. She knows how to proactively lead generate and it's fantastic. We use, I think we use Ziggy a lot because she's a great gal and she's got a cool name to talk about. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce her last name. Zagornis. Zagornis. Okay. <laughs> but the fact is we've had thousands of Ziggy's yeah. over the years. You and I have been doing this since, uh, you know, 1980 and we're in 1998, basically 1999, yeah. somewhere in there when we first took on our first coaching client and the, what you're expressing is once people move past, really they, the, the, you said the fil first filter, right? Is ignoring the noise. And that yeah. really is the hardest thing. That's to very do. hard because everybody else, people love the noise. I mean, when is the last mm -hmm. time, like it, in this cabin that we have, there's uh, again, people love their TVs. It seems. Ugh. And the first thing Julie yeah. and I did is we're Take taking them the off the wall. We're taking the TVs off the wall. There's a TV in the master bedroom. There's a TV in the main room. There's gonna be one TV in the entire house because the noise ruins. It dominates your thoughts and all these subliminal messages and you guys, I don't want to get out of conversation necessarily about being media free, but if you go media free for a week and you turn the TV back on, you are going to be disgusted with the amount of crap that you weren't even consciously filtering before. And I'll tell you what it starts out with is the news and then pharmaceutical commercials. Yeah. I mean, between those two things, it's just ridiculous the amount of garbage in it. Oh, I just play the TV on in the background. No, oh, no, you no, are no. being programmed. You are <laughs> being manipulated. You are being uh, taught to be fearful, taught to be dependent by allowing that omnipresent chatter in the background of garbage. It's like I was, you and I watched something on, um, what was it? I think it was Russia or maybe North Korea or whatever that they have. It was North Korea. Mm -hmm. And I think we listened to this actually on a Joe Rogan a podcast. podcast that they have to have, there's only three TV stations and they're mm -hmm. all propaganda mm -hmm. and they have to have one of the TV stations on at all times, constantly playing the propaganda in the background, programming sure. you. So even though you're, I don't hear it, it's in the background. It's seeping it its way into your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. That's what people are doing with CNN right now. I know. That's what people are doing with Fox News. I right read now. an article that was written by a British newspaper and the journalist said, I spent a little bit of time in the U.S. and by the time I left, I felt I was sick because I watched all the pharma commercials and yeah. I had convinced myself that there must be something wrong with me. And then he said, I didn't realize that those pharma commercials were, I think they're illegal in a lot they of are. Europe. You can't run them in you any You can't other, even do it. Right. In any other parts of the world. Well, when you and I went to Europe last in 2011, mm -hmm. I remember the first time we were in England and we were watching TV a little bit in the hotel and we were going like, what's different? What's different? <laughs> and the commercials were for like tea and biscuits and crumpets and <laughs> right. like BBC a lot of a lot of food commercials, a lot of traditional sure. British things, and occasionally a, you know some bizarro furniture store, just you know stuff. But it it wasn't anything that was negative. It was just like, hey, do you know about this biscuit shop? Yeah, you but know? there weren't farmer commercials, no. and it was like, what's di oh my god? And we went to Italy, the same mm -hmm. thing. Anyway, again, we're on a we're on a. Well, me we media took, is part of the issue. Media is it's it, but media in real estate is just like. Look, Julie and I are big Inman News fans, but Inman is nothing other than basically a propaganda channel for the tech companies that are trying to sell you stuff. And most of these tech companies, they come to market and they have these big notions of they're going to revolutionize the transaction, whatever, whatever. Inside, usually six to 12 months, where do they all revert to? Selling leads to agents. They all are. They're deciding they're going to come out with a CRM. They start out with some big grandiose notion and, you know, Inman does stories on them. They raise money from this hedge fund or whatever. And they're, you know, they're never have sold real estate CEO before is talking about how he's going to revolutionize the transaction and make it so you can basically buy or sell a house on your iPhone with three clicks. You guys have heard this story mm -hmm. a billion times. And so have we. Uh, never happens. And, and, and then there's the undercurrent of, well, this is going to make it so sellers are just going to list their houses online and disintermediate realtors and all that. Never going to happen. Never is going to happen. No. But what all these companies do, they realize their ideas are just basically, you know, never going to work. And they all revert to selling leads to agents or selling a CRM to agents or deciding they're going to be in the branding and marketing business. And that's what's happened. And all these uh, Inman has just basically become the CNN, essentially the MSNBC of real estate. And it's, you're subconsciously reading about some new whiz bang idea. You've got to get to the point 
where you don't even look for that anymore. Well, because you don't have that underlying craving or need fear. that you think that you need it. You don't get yeah. rid of the fear that you don't, that you have to worry about how to lead generate, get rid of the fear that you are not sure how to build your business. Get rid of the fear that you're not going to have money in 60 to 90 days. That's what we teach you to do in our coaching business. But it's business. so much easier than they think, right? All that has to happen, I know this from talking to tons and tons and tons of our coaching clients, all that has to happen really is you have that first win. Oh yeah, that's and what I mean. And then that's your new addiction. Right. Is winning because of your action. And it feels sometimes that that is, and this again, it, <laughs> Sometimes, well, you can tell we haven't had done any private coaching calls for 60 days. It's all kind of coming out on today's <laughs> yeah. show. But when they have yeah. that first win, not from yeah. a center of influence and past client, not because home not light sent them a lead, one. not no. because they bought a lead from Zillow, not because they just cheated or basically gave all their profit away for the sake of just doing a transaction, but when they actually proactively lead generate, when they pre-qualified, when they sent their pre-listing pack, when they did the listing presentation and they won competing against two or three other agents, the first time you have that experience, that probably for many of you is the first time you've ever had an experience like that in your entire lives. And when you have an experience like that, that becomes your, you're addicted to it. You want more. And then you start doing it more. And then maybe the shine comes a little bit off the wind because it becomes so easy, frankly, predictable, predictable, duplicatable. You're starting to take a number of listings consistently, have consistent uh, income. And then this weird thing starts showing up in your life, which is called profit. <laughs> and then that profit, then you start yeah. saying to yourself, well, what am I going to do with the money? Some of you will actually create problems for yourselves. You'll go into debt. You'll buy a boat. You'll start increasing your cash, your cash flow demands. You'll move away from what your original goal should have been, which is to be financially free. Well, we coach them too. And you'll create more okay. liabilities for yourself. And then you'll have to, you know, go up and down that financial experience a number of times. And then you're going to arrive back at Tim and Julie's uh, porch and you're going to say, okay, I know how to create business consistently. I know how to create revenue consistently. I know how to create profit consistently. I do not have, know how to build actual, I don't know how to be rich where I create uh, passive income. Well, that's part of the coaching program too. You guys get it? This is your life mission, whether you know it or not. Professional life mission, whether you know it or not. Assume the responsibility of being the person that becomes the future, look, it goes down to the future version of you versus the present version of you. If there are aspects of your life right now that you don't like, you know, spiritual, family, educational, uh, health, uh, what's the one I'm missing? Financial. Fem fem and did I say financial? Financial, family, physical, mental, spiritual, and educational. Right. So if there's any of those areas that are, that are lacking, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're lacking. Sometimes that's necessary. But it's because the past version of you, consciously or unconsciously, made decisions which were incongruent with the person that you thought you wanted to be. For example, if you are not experiencing financial abundance right now, if you're still essentially in that feast of famine mode in your business, it's because the past version of you didn't consciously make the decision to allow me to be direct with all of you so I don't feel that I wasn't become a coaching client and do what you don't and learn to do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level. The past version of you was essentially thinking that you could do it yourself. The past version of you thought you could just essentially TikTok or Facebook live or influence or buy your leads until the cows come home. The past version of you thought your highest and best use to increase your revenue was to add a bunch of team members, even though that has nothing to do with your net profit. You guys get it? So if you don't like the current version of you's financial uh, position or any aspects of your life, it's because the past version of you made, a, made decisions, most likely, that were essentially a, a, resulted in the results that you're experiencing now. So here's the challenge you have for yourself. And Julie's agreed to help me with this. Make it so the future version of you is singing the praises, the praises of the present version of you. Make it so the January 1st version of you, 2022 version of you, is saying, I love the September 2nd version of you because that person made decisions to do something that I hadn't, you know, that the previous version hadn't. Do the real work of real estate. Make the tough decisions. Stop being all nerfed up. Realize that it, this, you have to, you know, again, master the art and science of doing the real work of real estate. And when you do, on the other side of that is everything you want in life. And I mean that in the literal sense. When you have the financial monkey off your back, even when you're in the process of having it off your back, 
your other aspects of your life increase because the omnipresent stress of worrying about your finances decreases and eventually goes away. That is what you want. If you want to have a better physical life, if you want to have a better spiritual life, have more time to spend working on your body, working on your spirituality. If you want to have a better family life, they're the same answer. And the way to do that is remove finances as a burden in your life. Anything you'd like to say to these guys? Well, don't wait any longer. Take action now. Do something about it. And so the easiest thing for you guys to do now is just go over to timandjulieharris.com and obviously click on coaching, click on Premier Coaching, and become a coaching client. And it, you can join Premier Coaching for around $100 a month, and all of you can do it. it you know, basically, it's the simplest, easiest decision you'll have ever made. It's a decision all of you have already made. Some of you are procrastinating making it. Thousands of you are already Premier Coaching members. When you're in a Premier Coaching member, make sure you're attending the daily semi-private coaching call every single day. We're starting to have more new coaches. Well, they've been with us for a long time, but they're going to start running Premier Coaching too, so you guys have a little bit more diversity. We have one coach that's in San Diego. We have another coach that's in New York and Manhattan, actually. Um, we have other coaches that are in Texas. We're going to start getting you, giving you guys perspectives from coaches from different parts of the country. But don't worry. They're all coaching the Harris system because they all started out as coach, coach, Harris coaching clients. They themselves become became Harris certified coaches. And if you want to learn about that, go to harriscertifiedcoach.com. And then th we've offered them uh, actual jobs being coaches for us. Well, dare Tim, I say. you just kind of glaze over that. But here's the thing. All of our coaches are actively licensed. Most of them are brokers and all of them have been in business for a very long time following the same system they coach you. And they are certified. And they're certified. That makes a huge difference. They're not just somebody that we hired off the street saying, all right, well, you know, when an agent has a problem, just, you know, kind of figure it out. No, these guys have proven results, and, and we're really proud of them. And by the way, I know every time we mention Harris Certified Coach, we always get emails and resumes from people saying, I want to be a coach. It doesn't work like that. You have to actually pass through the, you know, the fires of Moldor, Moldor, what is it? From Mordor. Mordor, <laughs> and, and become a certified coach. You have to, be, have to be trained. You have to pass the test. There's a real test that's not easy. If you want to learn more about becoming a Harris Certified Coach, just go to HarrisCertifiedCoach.com. All right, Julie, we can wrap up. Yes. And tomorrow we can indeed. finish your points on being an introvert. I know. That's all right. So I did you a favor. You're going to have to come up That's with a new good way. Tomorrow. It's Friday. So it is. That's right. All right. You guys have a fantastic day. If you're in and around Murphy, North Carolina, we're going to go into town today and buy some, you know what we call it here in uh, Murphy, Julie? What? We're going to buy us some dry goods. <laughs> That's right. I need to pick that up. Dry goods. Yes. Dry goods. we got to get with the program here. I'm not 100% sure what a dry good is. I think it's a non grocery item. I think it's something that's not wet. It could be. Like, like, Firewood. Firewood, right. Ideally, yeah. yes. <laughs> In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.